Welcome back everyone. Today I will be canning these beautiful tomatoes. Um, some of them are a little bit more beautiful than others, but uh, I really need to do something with them because a lot of them are cracked um, from the really crazy rains we've been having. A lot of um, my plants actually have died or are in the process of dying because of the rain we've had. Um, the soil is just very soggy and it's been hot and so they basically, the roots just kind of steamed and cooked underground. So unfortunately, I don't know how many more tomatoes I will get. But what I do have, I want to make a tomato sauce. Now I still have quite a bit left from last year, um, but this is something I can use for like pizza, um, any tomato sauce, tomato soup base, and it's actually really good. And the way I make it, I make it a little bit more of like a veggie sauce. So I'll add some onions, probably celery, basil, uh, zucchini. I unfortunately don't have any zucchini from the garden because my plants got eaten by squash vine bore, so or they got destroyed. So I'm gonna plant some more. But anyway, I have some store bought zucchini, um, onions. What else? Maybe carrots. We'll see. But I. I don't know if you can see right back there. I have a pretty big Nesco, uh, what is this called? It's like a roaster oven thing. And I'm just going to chop this up. First I have to wash them, chop them up, put them in there, um, dump a lot of other things in there. I also have some frozen bell peppers from last year. I'll dump in there and just let everything cook on a very slow, slow and low heat. And just let all the juicy flavors and stuff come out. I'm not going to blend them yet. What I like to do is, I think I did this last year too, is I cooked everything and then I took an immersion blender and I believe I put it through like a regular blender just to make everything nice and smooth so you don't have to remove any tomato skins and it just makes it easier that way. That's just how I prefer it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get started, wash all of these up, start chopping them get them in the roaster pan and make some yummy sauce. So I thought I'd take you along. I don't really follow a recipe. Um, I have one my mom gave me. It's more of like for a tomato sauce. So I kind of went off of that a little bit. Um, but I'll just throw a bunch of things in there, taste it as I go, add some more seasonings if it needs some more like salt or things like that. And just kind of, it's nice because you can make it how you really want, want it to taste. So let's get started and get all of these tomatoes washed and I will be right back. Now that I have some of these tomatoes washed, I'm just going to chop them up, put them in this bowl so it's easier and then um, transfer them into there. And I know some of these um, do have some like imperfections and stuff. I'm not too worried about that. I'm just going to cut it off. I have a bowl here that's going to go in the compost and um, it is going to be cooked and then um, canned too, like a water bath canned. So I'm sure if there's anything bad left on there, it'll get cooked out because it's gonna be cooking for quite a while. But I will try to cut off as much as I can. Um, but some of these tomatoes are just so pretty. Like this is the um, Berkeley tie-dye pink. And then just the striping, I don't know if you can see, the lighting is really bad. But the stripes on here are just so pretty. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go through Chop these up, and then we'll grab some other things to add in there. So I do have um, a bowl already chopped up. They're so pretty, I love all the colors. I'm going to go ahead and dump this into the, the roasting pan um, just to kind of get it started so I can turn it on and have it come up, um, come up to, to a certain temperature. Um, my first time using it. So I have watched, I, I should probably rewatch it, um, I'll link I'll link the channel down, down below. It's Rachel, I believe her name is, from the 1870s homestead. And she was the one who kind of encouraged me to try to do more of like a veggie sauce. The recipe I have for my mom, like I said, is more of a tomato sauce. Where Rachel, she just added a bunch of different veggies in there. 
and um, I tried that last year and I really liked it. So, and she also uses a roasting um, pan, so I need to go back and rewatch her video uh, to see how she did it. But I'm just kind of making it up as I go. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and dump it in the pan and get that um, going. I did add a little bit of water. There's like in between you can pour water. I added some water. Again, I don't know if I need to or not, but I did it just in case. And um, there's a little, what does it say? Kind of it tells you, um, it says here for like baked veggies, you can do breads, cakes, casseroles. Um, I want to do more of like a slow cook, so it says about 225 to 275. So I think that's what I'll do for now, and just kind of let it slow cook. I'm about to plug it in, turn it on, and then if anything, I could always increase the temperature. This is a great way to clean out your freezer if you have some frozen um, veggies that you need to use up. So a lot of these are from the garden, um, and I'm just going to toss them all in, and this way I could clean out my freezer and uh, freeze pre fresh produce from this year. Um, I do have some chopped celery that is not from the garden, but I will go ahead and add that in. I have some onions. These are green bell peppers from the garden. Have some grated zucchini which I'm not sure I'll be able to get out of here but I'm gonna try Oops. all right just leave that all in there and let it uh, cook down a little bit I found a few more things in the freezer that I want to add. I have some of these spicy peppers that I have chopped up. I'm going to add a couple, of, a little bit of those, not all of that. I have some more bell peppers I'm just going to add in, some carrots, and some garlic. I'm not going to add, our, I'm not going to add all of the garlic, just a little bit. Um, but again, just trying to clean, up, clean out my freezer and I'm sure it'll make the sauce a little bit more yummy and add some more flavor to it. I'm just going to put the lid on here and let it cook on really low and slow. It's about on 250 right now. Um, and I'll just come back in a little bit, mix, check on it, and then I'll add most of the seasonings towards the end. So this has been, oh, my house smells delicious. I came in from working outside in the garden and it just smells so good. So as you can see, everything is cooking down really nicely. Looks delicious. Just going to give it a little bit of a stir. Mm, I wish you can smell it. I did chop some celery from the garden. This is actually pink Chinese celery, but I don't think I'm going to add any more. I did add some celery earlier. I'll probably just um, chop this up and freeze it either for like a broth or a different recipe. And that's why I have these bags here. I did um, rinse these out. These are the ones that had the frozen vegetables. And what I'll do is anytime I have any uh, veggie scraps that I want to save for like a broth, I will throw them into like a, a Ziploc bag, like a used Ziploc bag, put it in the freezer. And this way when I'm making a veggie or chicken broth, anything, I'll throw in all the veggie or 
scraps in there. I also have some basil that I harvested. It's not looking so great because I harvested it probably like an hour ago. Um, but I'm going to chop that up to add into here to give it a nice flavor. I just added the chopped basil or the fresh basil in here. I chopped it up. I'm going to add some dried, um, oh, these are basil leaves. I thought these were bay leaves. Oh well, let's add some of those. <laughs> I thought that was baby. Anyway, that's fine. I'm going to add some dill. I don't have any fresh dill from the garden. This is from my garden, but it's just frozen and chopped up. I'm going to add some of that in there. And as you can see, I'm not measuring. I'm just kind of going to see what happens. <laughs> Also add some frozen parsley, also from the garden. Sorry, that's the water pouring out of that pot. <laughs> it has come to a boil. From the recipe I have from my mom's tomato sauce, she puts two tablespoons of salt and I think it says a cup of sugar. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to mix it, let it cook for a little bit while longer and taste it again and see if I need to add anything else. Let that keep cooking down a little bit. This tomato sauce recipe, or the original one, my mom's, um, it does not have to cook for this long. Um, normally, what my mom would do is just um, blend the tomatoes up, put them um, on the stove in like a big pot, cook it for like an hour or two, just kind of low and slow, and then um, add some of the seasonings and everything, and then cook it again or not again, longer. I would say in total about three, four hours. This has been basically cooking for, I don't know, what has it been, like six, eight hours maybe? I don't remember honestly what time I started. Um, but this is just kind of because I have other things to do and so it's nice that I can just leave it in here and just let it slowly cook. What was that? Hello? <laughs> um, but I know, like I mentioned earlier, Rachel um, from the 1870s homestead, what she did, I believe it was for the tomato sauce. Again, I'm sorry if I'm wrong. Um, I have to go back and watch her videos. I think it was for the, for the tomato veggie sauce she did. I, I believe she even left it in there all night. Like she started in the evening, left it all night, and in the morning came and um, canned it. But again, I could be wrong. I don't want to leave it all night just because I have a dentist appointment early tomorrow and I won't be able to do it first thing in the morning. So I'm going to go shower um, and then once I come back I will blend everything with an immersion blender. I'll try that first. If that doesn't work well then maybe I'll have to take it out and put it in my regular blender which I really don't want to do because it's going to take forever. I don't have a big, a big blender, I just have a, a, the Nutra Bullet. And so I'm going to try my immersion blender and hopefully get a nice thick sauce and um, then maybe can it up. We'll see what happens. If I am too tired after all of this, then maybe I just will, will leave it like all night just on a really, really low heat. We'll see. But I will come back and let you know what I do. Okay, just kidding. I changed my mind. I'm going to try to blend it up a little bit now before I go take a shower and see what happens. Ooh. Got a good suction. 
think I'm going to um, go ahead and taste it just this way if it needs more I'll add it so, this, so it'll um, I'll add it now and give it some more time to cook and blend together I just tried this and I feel like it needs a little bit more sugar and some more seasoning um, I think because I added so many green bell peppers and I feel like green bell peppers can be a little bit um, I don't know if bitter is the right word, and I feel like I'm getting that taste. So I'm going to add some more sugar and some other seasonings to see if I can kind of um, fix that a little bit. Okay, start with that. I have this, I use the seasoning for everything, but I'm going to add a little bit of this. Some of this onion salt. Okay, that tastes a little bit better. I'm going to cover it and let it keep cooking and I'll come back to it after I take a shower. So it is the next day actually. I was way too tired last night to do to can these up and I had my dentist appointment this morning and it is actually already 11 o'clock. So I'm honestly happy that I kept the sauce in there all night because yesterday um, when I tried I said it had a little bit of like maybe of like a I wouldn't say bitter taste, but, li but a little bit. And I was saying it was probably because of all the green bell peppers. Well, I think cooking it for such a long time, I just tried it and I don't taste that anymore. So I don't know if it just tastes different because I just had coffee and then tried the sauce or if it really did kind of cook out and like all the flavors blended together. Um, but I think it tastes even better than it did yesterday. So honestly, I'm happy I kept it in here. It was on, I had a temperature on about like 225 I would say and it just slowly it was it's still hot but it just kind of slowly cooked all night and it tastes delicious so I have my jars here and if you can see I just sterilize them I'm going to start filling them up and then we'll get them in the water bath this is actually I have so many aprons but this is my mama's so it's really special to me um, I have to wash it because I kind of got it a little bit dirty and it is kind of stained I don't know if you can tell my mom cooked quite a bit um, and I don't think this is necessarily the one she wore all the time but um, it's really special to me and I love wearing it so I have my mama's apron on so I'm going to go ahead and start filling up these jars my house smells amazing I came back from my dentist appointment and I walked in and I was like "Ooh, smells good I definitely need um, a lot more jars than I had planned on, but I'm going to get some of these covered and get them in the canner just to get them going while I finish up the rest. These are done processing. I'm just waiting a little bit until I take them out. I'm going to wipe these down and then these can go in. So total, I got two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, sixteen. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. I'm sorry, seventeen um, 
quart, no, these are pints, <laughs> small jars. <laughs> Um, and there's a tiny bit left in the pan, but I'll just put that in a smaller jar and leave that in the refrigerator. We can use that. Um, but I'm really excited. It was a great harvest and hopefully, um, we will get to enjoy these throughout the winter and maybe I can share some with family too if they'll want some. Most of the jars are already sealed. I'm going to leave them on the counter for a few days. I like to leave them out for a little bit even after they cool off because, uh, for example, my pickles that I did, they all sealed, they all seemed great, but the next day I came back and one of the jars had popped back open or the seal broke. So I just put that in, ref in the refrigerator and we'll eat that. But that's kind of why I like to leave them out for like a couple days just to make sure that they're all sealed really well and then I'll store them away. But I'm basically just going to finish up this, the same process. I don't think you want to watch it over and over. <laughs> but um, I hope you enjoyed today's video and maybe you learned something. Um, I know for me, canning was so uh, kind of scary. I always hear of like jars exploding or, you know, things like that. But I remember the first time, I'm very thankful my mom uh, was still alive. And I called her, I feel like, every two minutes. Am I doing this right? How do I do this? Even though she, like, told me step by step, but still it feels it's kind of scary, you know, the first time. Uh, or it feels, like, intimidating. But once you do it a couple times, it just, it's not that hard or it's not that intimidating or scary. I did buy a pressure canner. I haven't done any pressure canning yet, which I'm scared to try that. But I feel like, again, once I do it a couple times, it'll... It'll be like uh, second nature, hopefully. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you all next time.